Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to actually make some realistic real-world API calls. We're going to use the Open Weather Map API to look into some weather forecasts, and then we're going to use that data in our application. The previous couple videos kind of got us ready to use APIs, but they weren't very practical. This one's going to be more realistic. So the first thing you need to do, and you need to follow along and code along as always, make sure you're doing this, go to openweathermap.org slash API. And once you do, click on Sign In, and it'll have you sign in. If you don't already have an account, which I assume most of you don't, click here to create an account and just fill out the information. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in real quick. So once you are signed in, you should see a screen like this. If you don't, just click on your um, username. So if you're still over here, just hit sign in over there and it'll take you back. It says you already signed in. But we're looking for API keys. Now you have, if you click on the API keys, you can generate as many API keys as you need. Um, the way the API keys work are they're basically your username and your password for using this API. Open Weather Map has various APIs that you can use. Some of them are free, some of them are not. And in order to use them, you have to use your API key as part of your call. Now, I've blurred out my key here for obvious reasons. I don't want people using my key to um, make their calls, even though it, it wouldn't really hurt anything because it's entirely free. It's just not good practice. But what you're going to do is you are going to take this key right there and copy it because you're going to use that inside of your application. So back inside of GORM IDE, I'm going to make a new directory and just make a new application. So let's, I'm in week nine, so make directory, we'll call this weather API. And CD into there. So let's touch weather, let's just make this app.js. Touch app.js. So inside of weather API, we have app.js. So the first thing we need to do is get node fetch. So npm i node fetch. And we're not doing the whole um, npm init and setting up a whole um, node application, all that kind of stuff, because this is just kind of a throwaway. In the real world, you would do that first, obviously. So const fetch equals require node fetch. And remember, this is just importing node fetch because fetch is not included in node.js natively, so you have to use the package. So let's go ahead and make our API key, const API key, and you can call this anything you want, equals the string, and you're just pasting your API key there, just as a string, and I like to set up a URL, constant, so const URL equals, and we're going to use a template string, and right now, https colon slash slash, I'm just going to do URL here, because we don't know what URL we're using yet. Right now we're using a template string. So let's go ahead and find the URL. So let's go back to the API. And we're just looking at the documentation. So you'll see here there's several different APIs you can use. They have current data, hourly forecast, bulk download, all kinds of different stuff. Some of these are free, some are not. We're just going to use the current weather data because it's available for free and paid subscriptions. So we're just going to look at the documentation, API doc and it walks you through entirely what you need to do and what the data is going to look like when you get it back, all kinds of stuff. So here's the API call right there. Boom. You can, you can see here that it has Q equals city name and app ID is your, your um, API key. You can do city name state code. You can do city name state code country code for your API key. This allows you to get more and more specific depending on how specific you need your data. If you just want the data from New York City, you can just use city name. But if you're using the data for Hartsville, South Carolina, we're a very small town, so you probably need to put all of that information in there. But really, I think I'm just going to get it for a zip code. I don't think I need the actual um, city, so I'm just going to get it for my zip code. They have some examples of API calls, whether um, London, Q equals London, comma, UK, you can search by city ID. Um, here's the, the giant list of city IDs if you want to download that. It's absolutely massive, but it allows you to quickly and easily make API calls for the cities. Geographic coordinates. Um, you can do latitude and longitude. 
by zip code. That's the one we are interested in. So to do zip code, you need your zip code and your country code. So we're going to copy this, this URL, and instead of this, I'm going to paste it in there. You still do need the HTTPS colon slash slash. Now we just need to fill out this data, zip people zip, zip code, and then comma country code. So instead of that, my zip code is 29550, and my country code is US. And I know that US is my country code because in the documentation it says um, use ISO 3166 country codes. Now if you don't know what that is, which I assume most of you don't because I had to Google it too, country codes. International standard for country codes, how can I use them, all that kind of stuff. I just used the online browsing platform because they've got a nice little website set up where you can search for it. I just searched for United States and there's the country code right there. If you needed something else, so if you needed um, United Kingdom, it would be GB. So that's how I got the US. I just read the documentation and then Googled it. So there's my zip, there's my country code, and then for your API key, I'm just going to use the API key constant that I set up above. So now I have an API key, now I have a URL, and I need to come down and actually do the fetch. So we're going to fetch URL dot then do stuff with it. So the first thing we need to do, we have our response, and the first thing we need to do is to convert that to JSON. Res.json. We need to make sure to actually return res.json. Dot then we're going to just console dot log that response. And if we get an error, we're just going to console dot log the error. Save and let's give it a go. Node app.js. There we go. Boom. We got a JSON response has our coordinates, has our weather, um, it has the temperature, visibility, all that kind of stuff. It also has the name, so it's nice that it, it included the Hartsville, even though I didn't put it in there, just based on the um, zip code. So our fetch was successful. It worked. Just for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and pulled up the raw data right here. It looks like this when it comes from their servers, but if I pretty print it, it's the exact same right here. So this is what the data looks like, and it's the exact same as it is in here, except over in the browser I can, I have, because of my extension, I have a little bit more ability to minimize and maximize things. So now it is time for a challenge. What I would like you to do is to go ahead and get this response, but then, instead of console.logging all of it, only console.log this description. In mine, it says scattered clouds. It may or may not say the same thing in yours because obviously you're doing it for at a different time. Um, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to make that call. And then instead of console.logging everything, only console.log that description. That description. In order to do this, you're going to make sure that you need to use your bracket notation, your dot notation, or anything like that to go ahead and just console.log that string. Try it before watching the solution. You're going to learn a lot more if you try it, even if you can't get it on the first go. Do some Googling, do some look at Stack Overflow, read the documentation, give it a go. After you are done, feel free to press play, and I'll go through it real quick, and you can check your work. Welcome back. Hopefully you were successful. If not, that's fine. Not a big deal. Let's go through and look how we're going to do that. So our response comes back. Let's go ahead and just run it again. Our response comes back with the single object. So on that object, we want the weather. And we could do dot weather, and I think I'm just gonna do dot weather. So let's try that and see if that helps. Yep, so now inside of dot weather, I want the first item because weather is an array. I want the first item. Let's try that and see if that's better. So now I have the first item, and inside of that, I want description. Let's see if that works. 
boom, broken clouds. So you can see where how I just drilled down in that JSON. I started here, then I went to weather, and then inside of weather I got the first item, and then inside of that I got the description. And now for the second challenge of this video, what I would like you to do is to use the five-day, three-hour forecast, which is also available for both free and paid subscriptions. I would like you to use this to get the temperature at 9 o'clock p.m. for the next five days, and then log that to the screen. 9 o'clock p.m. in UTC, because Open Weather uses the UTC time zone. I'm not going to ask you to convert time zones yet. So we want 9 o'clock p.m. for the next five days, and only that, and then log that to the screen. This is going to be a little bit more in-depth than the last one because you're going to have to figure out how to make your API calls. You're going to have to look at the data and figure out how to um, show only the data you want. And remember, this is likely going to involve a little bit of vanilla JavaScript formatting. So go ahead and give that a go. If you get stuck, make sure you Google, read the documentation, look at Stack Overflow or anything else. Please give it a really good try. Those of you who are going to get the most out of this and learn the best and remember the most of this are those of you who are going to try these without just watching my solution. So go ahead and give it a go. Once you are done, feel free to press play and continue the video. All right, how'd you do? I hope you were successful. So let's go ahead and look at this documentation and figure out exactly what we need to do. So the API calls right here are api.openweathermap.org and then all of this different stuff. So again, I'm going to use the zip code. So I want my zip code. So here is the URL. Paste it in there zip code is my zip code and you can use your own I don't care country code is US and then the API key is API key then we're going to fetch that and just return the response just so we can look at it uh -oh, we're getting an error only absolute URLs are supported oh because I didn't do the HTTPS save try that again all right so this is looks like a bunch of stuff and it's kind of hard to look at here especially considering that it just says object array object array that doesn't really help me so i need to come up here and then get this i'm going to actually look at it in the browser which is going to give me a better view of what this actual json looks like all right, so now we have all this different stuff. There's, this is a much larger API call. You can see there's a bunch of data here. Bunch, 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 bunch of data. So I can see that I have a list, and that list is, looks like it's going to be all of the weather. So inside of that list is what I want, and it looks like it's just going to do it, just a, a big old list of times. And if I look at this time, this is a, the DT, is the date stamp, and that's going to be a um, Unix timestamp. So Unix timestamp so I'm just going to enter my timestamp there, convert that is 6 o'clock p.m. I don't want 6 o'clock, I want 9 o'clock so it's probably going to be the next one, so let's look at this one get this one convert there we go, 9 o'clock so this is every three hours, so the second one is the first one that I want so there's a, a few different ways we could go about doing this. We could go through and find each of these numbers for each one, which one we want. We want the first one, and then we come down and find the next one, find the next one. That's, that's kind of annoying, so I'm not going to do that. So instead, we're just going to write a for loop. So step number one is just going to log this first one. So we want our response list and then the, the second item on that list. So constant.log response.list. And then the second item, or the item at index 1, let's run this again and see what it does. All right, that's what we want. That does give us the correct thing. And then we want, then we just want the temperature. So we're here. We need to go into main and get temp. So dot main dot temp. Let's try that. There we go. Now, obviously, it's not going to be 300 degrees. If you look here in the documentation, the temp, let's find it, 
temperature is in Kelvin. So I did not ask you to convert from Kelvin to Celsius or Fahrenheit. So if you didn't do that, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could actually do the math to convert from Kelvin to Fahrenheit, which is fine. But personally, I'm just going to do it this way because the format allows us to um, set our units. So we want units to be imperial. So our call here, we just add another, and units equals imperial. There we go, and now all of our temperatures are in Fahrenheit. So that's what I'm going to do. And units equals imperial. Save, try that again. There we go, 79 degrees. That's what the temperature it's going to be at 9 o'clock. Now that's just one, but we want for the next five days. So what I'm going to do is do a for loop. For uh, let i equal one, because I want to start at one, not zero. i is less than, how many are there in here? Run as long as i is less than 39. I could do the math to figure out exactly, but, and then I, instead of I plus plus, I plus is equal to, because we want to go a whole day. We want to do the entire day, and we know that it's every three hours. Right? I think three hours, yeah, every three hours, so there's eight in a day. So I is plus or equal to eight. The reason for this is because we want every eighth one starting at index number one. So for that, and instead of 1, we're going to use i. Save and run. And we get the temperatures for at 9 o'clock for the following days. Goodness gracious, it's going to be 92 degrees at 9 o'clock at night. Holy mess, we're going to fry. Now that was a lot more involved than the previous one, so if you got stuck at any point, don't feel bad. Especially if you got stuck at the timestamps or trying to figure out how to get every eighth item or things like that. Don't let that discourage you. That's perfectly fine. These are problems that everybody's going to run into, and you just have to kind of learn to overcome those, to keep trying and, and problem solve and figure your way out of there. Hopefully you noticed that I took this a step at a time. First I got, I, um, got the first one, and then just did one. And then I figured out how to get the um, imperial units that I wanted. And again, you didn't have to do that. I didn't ask you to do that. I just wanted to show you how. And then I figured out how to use a for loop to get the exact ones that I wanted. So in this video, we did a few things. First and foremost, we used an actual production API to get real-time weather information. This is something that could be super useful if you're making things. If you wanted to make some sort of a weather um, application, a web application or something like that, this would be an API you could use. It's, it's super useful. We implemented that API using our API key. This is very common, by the way. A large portion of APIs have keys because you have to create an account and that key is associated with your account. We talked about why the key is important to keep private because it's like your username and your password for that API. If it's free, it's, it's a little bit less critical. However, it's a very good habit to get into. And then finally, we parsed JSON data into a true JavaScript object and then retrieved specific data from that object that we wanted. We didn't want that whole giant object that they returned here. We didn't want all of this, these 40 different weather objects at the specific times. We only wanted it at 9 o'clock. So getting all of this data, we parsed through it and only got the data that we wanted. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.